Hello guys, welcome to A New Daily in Life. My name is Philip Ball and I'm going to be your host for today. Um, just before we go, I just want to say thank you to those viewers from last week who posted some likes and comments on there. Thank you much for everything. And hopefully you guys are watching. If you need to make any comments, please do so on www.facebook.com forward slash South or Television. Or alternative, you can ring in on our uh, number on 0208 070 3227. Um, today it's... Um, we're marking a, a big um, momentous occasion. It's National Fostering Fortnight. Um, so loads of people, are, loads of governments are talking about fostering. And today's guest is, is she's an expert in the area. She's been a social worker for 30 years, working across a number of different services, different um, genres, adults, children, worked for local government as management. Um, the person I'm going to introduce you to today is our expert, is Ranjana Pandey. Uh, she's a business associate from Stepping Stones Washington Limited. So, thank you. Thank you. So, Ranjana, so welcome to the show. Thank you for inviting me. Thank okay. you. Just uh, for the viewers at home, if you could just give us an introduction, uh, just a summary of what you've done in the last 30 years. Um, well, I have worked in social work. I originally started out uh, in the days when there were hardly any social workers um, hmm. with the Asian community. So I had the opportunity to work right across the board with, uh, from adults to children, um, <clears throat> from fostering and adoption to people with, um, you know, who were less able-bodied, Mm -hmm. um, to mental health. So basically I covered a lot of areas mm -hmm. in my practice and um, sort of remained mostly in children and families work and uh, I now work in the independent sector mm -hmm. uh, primarily in fostering. Yeah, um, you're <coughs> a business associate with uh, Stepping Stones Foster Limited. Um, do you mind explaining what Stepping Stone is? and? Stepping Stones is an independent fostering agency that mm. was set up by Neetha Joshi mm. in 2015. Now, Neetha is what in um, legal parlance would be known as the responsible individual. Mm. And she set this up because she has a prior experience of having a run a, a niche fostering agency along with a business partner she ran a, a fostering agency that was directed specifically at recruiting Asian foster carers okay. at a time when there weren't uh, sufficient foster carers for Asian children. Hmm. So she has a lot of experience in the field and um, I think the time had come when the partners decided to move on and mm -hmm. separate. So, <clears throat> excuse me, she decided that she would set up on her own and this time around she's decided to um, widen the, the, the scope of the agency in terms of recruitment uh, so that it's not just Asian families anymore, it's um, anybody from the community okay. who feels that they could foster and so you know that's what what Which is good. Stepping so, so Stepping Stone is open to, to everyone to join? It's and open to everyone from every community. Mm. Uh, we are actively trying to recruit foster carers from various backgrounds. So for those who are, who are watching our show, and uh, feel free guys to, to put your comments and your questions to uh, Ranjana, what is fostering? What is this fostering about? Fostering is... Um, uh, the state's response to looking after children in care who cannot, for various reasons, be returned uh, at that particular point to to their families. Hmm. So they cannot. This may be for a very short period of time. So you know. Um, so it can be because the family have asked for help. A parent has to go into hospital or something, and they might just be asking for a little bit of help in looking after a child, and. Um, they they may have nobody who can do that for them, so they will ask for that sort of help. The other extreme mm -hmm. is where the state intervenes because the child or children in a family have been ill-treated and um, the state has gone to the courts and asked for care orders to be made to the local authority, who then is seeking to place them with a family um, to look after them as parents. They are not parents. Foster carers are not parents. Mm -hmm. but they look after children in that role. So. so in terms of fostering, what makes 
a person a good fosterer? What qualities are you looking for? A sense of humor. <laughs> that really <laughs> helps because anybody who's ever raised children or been around them mm. knows that children can really push your buttons. Okay. Um, and these are going to be children who have come from, have suffered some kind of trauma. Mm. So uh, you, do, you need to be uh, flexible, you need to be, you need to be empathetic, you need, um, as I said, a sense of humor. You yourself need to be resilient, that okay. you have gone through life and faced up to some difficulties yourself and come through and know that, um, you know, you're still standing and that you can help a child achieve the best outcomes for them. Um, so that I think, I mean, there are lots of things uh, that we would look for in terms of what makes a good carer. Hmm. But that is uh, sort of very quickly off the top of my head, some of the things that I can think of. Sure. But being flexible, all those kind of things really matter. Hmm. It's, it's one of those things um, of um, people talk about fostering and they go, well, they got to an age where they're quite educated in their profession. And they go, parents or even couples or single people. Is it? Does it have to be families, or it can be a genre of? Different no, people? anybody over the age of twenty-one can apply to become a foster carer. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't matter what your marital status is. You could be single. You could be divorced. You could be gay. You could be, you know, um, somebody with perhaps a hidden disability or. Mm -hmm. or or a disability which will not interfere in your in, in your ability to parent a child. So um, I think it's always best if you're interested is to approach uh, an organisation like like ours, approach Stepping Stones, approach an agency, and and express an interest, and we can talk you through it. Well, that's that's quite key because um, Stepping Stones, from my understanding, provide a service that allows them to talk directly to someone a professional. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. If you're interested in fostering, you can ring up the, the office mm -hmm. um, and I'm told that you will be putting the number up. It yeah. will be available. The numbers and details will be put up on screen and we'll be talking right. about it as well. Um, as Stepping Stones, what does what the staff like at Stepping Stones? Well, um, we are all qualified, um, except for the responsible individual who doesn't have to be uh, a social worker. But uh, the fostering manager is, 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 a, is a qualified social worker. The supervising social worker is, is qualified. Mm. Uh, I have a social work qualification. Basically, as an agency, Stepping Stones tries to um, get people with qualifications to work in the organization, uh, people with a professional social work background mm -hmm. and lots of experience in, in, in fostering and adoption. But we also, when we are outsourcing services, are trying to find people who are professionals in their field. So, if, if someone of our audience contacted Stepping Stone and spoke to yourself or Onito and uh, said, mm -hmm. I would like to inquire about becoming a foster carer, what are the processes? What's, how's it going? Well, uh, it begins with uh, saying that that's an expression of interest mm -hmm. and they will take down your details and uh, then somebody will call you back and go through a number of questions. For example, uh, you may be uh, very interested in fostering, but if you don't have the accommodation, it, this isn't going to go very far. So, for example, you need a separate bedroom for any child that you mm -hmm. may foster. And then there are rules about um, sibling groups. You know, uh, people often think, well, children can sleep uh, together. They can, they're sisters and brothers, and they can share the same room. Well, yes and no. So there are rules about these things. So we would just go through a whole host of questions with you to see what is the best way forward. And how long will this process normally take? If um, well, legislation is such now that we have a post of assessment and I would have to point out that uh, everything around fostering is, um, is, is mandated by law. So uh, there are uh, standards that uh, organizations have to follow. Mm -hmm. So in Stepping Stones, uh, we do the same thing. And to carry out a full assessment, uh, we would have to undertake what's known as a Form F assessment. Okay. That includes um, details about your background, mm -hmm. and there are factual uh, 
um, bits of information that we need, such as uh, you would have to have police clearance. We would want to know about your medical history, who your GP is, are you fit enough? And then there are other bits which are about your upbringing. How did it influence you? Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, your attitudes towards child rearing, your experiences of working with children what you think makes mm. um, for a good parent, your attitudes towards training and development. Mm. Um, and we look for evidence-based okay. information. So, so you would have yeah. to back up. So you need someone who's got some knowledge of probably raising their children, probably mm -hmm. someone who's got Absolutely. Uh, some sort of uh, yes. qualifications. Um, and in terms of what is the actual role of a, a foster carer? The foster carer, as I said, is there to undertake um, the, 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 the role of a, a, of a parent. Um, mm. It does not mean that they replace the parent. It just means that they will undertake to look after these children as any and provide what we uh, refer to as good enough parenting. Mm. So they would uh, ensure that the children get a good education, that they remain healthy, that they are um, being brought up to be independent, that they um, can contribute to society, they're law, you know, abiding. So um, they have access to leisure activities mm. and recreational activities. So it's that full sort of package sure. that we're looking for um, that, that, that a, a, a foster carer provides mm. for these children. We, we just had an online question from Rani Corn. Thank you much, Rani, for um, sending a question. She goes, can single people foster care? Yes. If provided, they can go through um, the initial stage, as I said, of us having to do the background checks, which by law we have to. Mm. So um, if there is, uh, but there is nothing that stops single, there are lots of very successful single people who are foster carers, excellent foster carers. I don't know, talking about child and data protection and all the other mm -hmm. sessions, you've got to be quite clued on with um, who you are. So making sure you, you filter out those people, especially yes. with all the news going on with the child abuse, everything there, you, yes. I take it stepping stones takes, goes the extra mile to make sure. Well, we carry out all the necessary checks that we have to, but at the same time, we recognize that this is a very um, intrusive process. Hmm. So, you know, you want to make people as comfortable as possible. And let me tell you, having written some of these reports, people often look at them and they read it uh, because you uh, have access to your copy mm. of your assessment and they read it and they go, oh my God, uh, <laughs> I didn't know mm. that, this, that you um, were taking down my life history so patiently uh, and so well. And uh, this is like my autobiography. Um, so you must they, be a quite a patient person listening uh, to them. You have to be, and you also have to be non-judgmental mm. because all of us have done things that we may not feel very proud of. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, if you have had time to reflect on your background, then it can certainly help you in terms of thinking, well, I was a kid once and I did these stupid things and uh, mm. learned my lessons. Um, so how do I now take that experience and help a young person going through something similar and not trying to judge them. But. So it's about helping helping those who are less fortunate than you, is it? Um, I don't know whether I'd say it's helping somebody who's less fortunate, but I think it's it's having that desire to help a child mm -hmm. achieve the best outcomes for them. Mm. It, it's 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 that sense of uh, achievement that you get as either as a worker or as a foster carer, knowing you made a huge difference in the life of a child. Um, so, um, you know, when a child finally goes through school or mm. gets to university or um, a, a, a child who has been written off in terms of maybe medical issues, that they won't be able to do this, they won't be able to stand, they won't be able to sit, they won't be able to talk, it's knowing that you through the, the, the provision of care that you've provided as, a, as foster carers and, and your family, obviously, are huge in that, um, that you've managed to achieve, you know, uh, very positive outcomes for these children, so. Stepping Stones is a company based in London. Yes. Are they restricted to only placing people within London or can they go anywhere in the UK? 
Well, they um, can. Rec uh, they, they have a sort of a, uh, an interest in the in, in the West Midlands, from what I understand. Mm -hmm. But really, people uh, can apply. Primarily, we are looking in, 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 in the London, Greater London area. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is not to say that if you live somewhere uh, where you know you find that the local resources are not very good, mm -hmm. we would welcome your interest. You can be anywhere and uh, express an interest and, and talk to us. I mean, it's going to cost you nothing to talk to us. So, you, see, um, you guys seem like a friendly bunch. So. Well, we are. We are very, very friendly. <laughs> <laughs> and we are interested in friendly people, um, you know, and people who are really interested in helping children. I think always, the focus always has to remain on children. So what kind of age range are, do you have to be a certain age range? Is it upper range for foster carers or can you be? No, as long as you're 21 plus, you have, you can evidence that you have experience of having worked with children mm. uh, or raised children of your own. Um, and you could be retired, you could be a grandparent. Um, people come into fostering for all sorts of reasons. So, um, you know, there is nothing really to stop you expressing an interest. Um, obviously, again, as I said, if you're very young, maybe you will have a lack of experience mm. in childcare. If you're uh, um, the other extreme where you are uh, in your golden years, then it may be that you um, might have some health issue. But, you know, again, talk to us. I would keep on saying again and again, I would really mm. emphasize that. Stepping stones, we welcome people um, uh, from very diverse backgrounds. So please, just get in touch with us. You talked about different levels, people being the golden years, people being the early years. Mm -hmm. What support and training does Stepping Stone provide for people who need foster care? As, as again, it's mandatory that as part of their assessment, they have to start out by doing uh, undertaking a course that's known as a Skills to Foster, which is uh, a course which teaches you all about fostering. Before this event, of course, people are often asked to come to an open evening to just know more about the agency, to know whether they're interested and what the job entails in detail. We'll often ask a, a foster carer to come there um, mm -hmm. and talk to, to, to interested parties. But there's lots of, uh, for, you know, a training and development is an ongoing process. So we expect you to be involved. Um, we expect that you can do some of the courses online. Um, there are peer group um, mm -hmm. uh, meetings and um, it's, it's an agency where we like feedback. Mm -hmm. So if you're particularly interested in, in some aspect of fostering and that once you become a foster carer or, for example, you may already be in a profession like uh, you're a psychologist or something, uh, where you work with children, you've got a lot of experience, you may want to go into something like a therapeutic fostering or whatever. So we would look to see, you know, what are the options, how can we help you and uh, as long as we can achieve, as I said, the best outcomes for children and remain child focused, then um, training and development have got to be able to be a, a, a big part of that. You mentioned just uh, now that um, you got those different professionals can actually apply and become a professional. How much time and effort would fostering take for a normal person? Ideally, um, you should really be a full-time foster carer. At least one of you should be if you are applying as a couple mm -hmm. or, um, you know, um, whatever your circumstances. If two of you are applying jointly, then one of you, if you can um, um, not be working but be able to devote your time and energy to fostering full-time, that is really uh, the ideal solution. If you can't, and for whatever reason, you have to carry on working, we understand that. Um, in that case, when it comes to matching placements, we will be looking at perhaps uh, school age going children, but then we would want to know uh, what happens when the child is sick mm -hmm. and you've got work. Uh, have you got something, mm -hmm. you know, in place, support care or a support system for yourself, but also, um, have you got arrangements with your work that you would take time off? Well, that would be quite similar to how if you had your own child, you would have that provision in place. 
Uh, you would think so, but sometimes <laughs> I think initially uh, foster carers are not thinking of that. They, they, their prospective foster carers often just think, um, well, I'm interested, but they haven't thought through all those kind of issues. So those we would address in a, in a, you know, um, in their fostering assessment or even before that, that uh, let's look at the age range. What category do you wish to be approved in? Um, are you only going to do this short term? Are you only going to do it? You, there are people who work who are respite carers. Okay. What's respite carers? Respite carers are carers who um, will help a, 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 an approved foster family with child or children placed with them uh, who need uh, a, a respite every so often. That is, they need a break from fostering. And that could, again, be for any number of reasons. So they will um, then go to this approved foster carer for uh, an agreed time. Uh, it could be for a week, could be for a weekend, could be during the holidays. So it's something that, you know, some people uh, undertake. As I said, just uh, others do emergency or short term, long term. So there are different um, you know, um, categories there sure. of approval. We've um, sent so a message from Sunita. She's um, said, um, do you have to be the same religion to or ethnicity to foster? How does that work? No, you don't. Um, you don't. We would ideally seek to place children from the same background uh, just because it is very important that a child be uh, in touch with their cultural and uh, religious heritage. So you want to encourage, as part of a child's sense of identity, you want to be able to encourage them to, um, you know, be placed with people who can help them uh, locate that sense of identity within mm. themselves. And so it does help to place children with the same religion, but that is not what we, uh, there are, uh, we have children placed with um, across uh, religious and cultural divides and foster carers often will take children to a child's place of worship or we have um, workers who do that if they, foster carers can't do it. So there are ways around it. So th there's opportunities it's for people to give up some of their time to help people from their community to go to places of worship. Um, so is that something that they can, if someone was interested in perhaps not foster caring themselves, but being there for their time to take them, say, to a church or synagogue, a mandir or gurdwara, would that something that we could look at them as support workers, mm -hmm. um, but then they would have to put themselves through that process of assessment as well, in the sense that we would have to know a lot about them. Mm -hmm. So there would have to be an assessment. So uh, there needs to be the, the, the checks. The process, absolutely. History. We still need a police check on them. We mm -hmm. still need a criminal history, uh, you know, a, a background check. So all those background checks would be made on them regardless. We, we want to safeguard children placed in our care. So we want to make sure that they are pla placed with and go out with mm -hmm. uh, people that we feel absolutely can protect and, and safeguard children. What I'm hearing here is quite a lot of that stepping stone is about being professional, being yes. ethical, yes. and being, um, well, being a, a company that listens as well. Is that something? Oh, we love feedback from our carers and we try mm -hmm. to do as much as this is possible. Uh, but it's not just the carers. We, we, as I said, it's, it, when, the, when the carers, um, because they're the ones who spend 24 seven with the child mm. uh, and they get to know the child far better than any of us. Um, so if they identify certain needs, uh, we identify certain needs as professionals mm -hmm. and as care, you know, as, as social workers, and we work closely with the, with the child social worker. But yes, the whole point is to, is to receive feedback in, in the spirit that it's meant. So you should be able to take uh, positive and constructive criticism and be able to work jointly to provide the best outcomes for children that you can. So, so it's been part of that all-round professional team. Yes, it's known as, well, foster carers are very much uh, part of the team uh, around the child, mm. very much so. So there's, there's yourselves, there's probably other social workers. There are education professionals, healthcare professionals, um, it's, and of course, let's not forget the placing authority, the responsible authority. Um, so if a foster carer is taking their time out, 
for this. They probably a single mum or a couple who've got a husband out and a mother staying at home, or vice versa. Mm. Is there some sort of financial reward for this, the hard work? As a foster carer, is there is there a re- allowance or something? Yes, all foster carers do get uh, a, a set allowance, mm-hmm. and uh, and and I believe there are tax breaks for the money that you earn in that capacity. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you have to be very careful because I think money is not what should motivate you to foster. Sure. Uh, let's be very clear about it because we will explore very closely with you two things. One is your motivation to foster, but secondly, how will you manage uh, financially if you don't have a placement at the time? So Mm. if you're going to do it just for the money, I'm sorry, um, you know, no amount of money can make up for really the amount of effort a good foster carer is going to put in. Just for for those um, at home, I just wanted to just check with you um, if you've got any stories that or something you can share with the viewers about how foster care is like a typical day for a foster care or a typical week oh wow i think that depends very much on um the 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 nature of the placement the Mm -hmm. age of the the young person or child placed with the family so it can really vary a lot um if a child is uh placed because of healthcare needs they may be any number of um, health and, and, and education kind of things to coordinate the services, to make sure uh, that the appointments are managed, that um, the, the child is, is, is getting the support that they need mm. at the right time. Uh, you may have to give medication, you may have to, you know, um, uh, uh, as I said, work with the, very closely with the schools, so there can be. But but I think, whatever the age, perhaps um, what you've got to remember is that it's like bringing up any child. It's there are going to be good days and bad days. Hmm. So there is no I, there's no uh, typical day for a okay. foster care. It's the same as for raising your own children. So every day is unique. Every day is unique, and a child is going to to, to wake up one day with a big beaming smile and the next day we down in the dumps um, and you've got to take it all in your stride and deal with it um, so so what uh, kind of support is provided by stepping stones to the foster carers um, as an agency we have the supervising social worker who works closely who is the foster carers uh, social worker who works very much in partnership with uh, the foster carers hmm. and in turn also acts as a go-between between between the the foster carer and the the local authority so they negotiate any issues that may arise that are difficult uh, with the local authority social worker who is the child's social worker so there's quite a lot of um, toing and throwing and once again the word professionalism comes into it well, and that is also about working in partnership with people. Mm-hmm. It's about bringing, as I said, um, the best out of all the services that need to be coordinated to provide um, a, a very positive outcome for, for children. Yeah, which is, which is fantastic. And there's those of people watching our show, I just want to say thank you very much, guys, um, for your um, input. A um, few shout-outs, Jesse Core, thank you much for having a look. Rani, once again. Mr. Singh as well. So just um, continuing forward, we're going to be heading towards our break. Um, After the break, we're going to be continuing talking to Munjana about uh, fostering and foster care. If you've got any questions, please um, send us a message. Alternatively, you can ring on the show, and I'm sure Munjana will be able to answer any questions that you have. So um, that's great. So um, I just want to leave you for a few ad breaks and see you on the other side of the show. Thank you very much. from 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock we come together with different guests and heal teach and reset our life in money power and abundance so join us on Uttar Jago Geo Tuesday to Thursday 10 to 11 a.m. on Sapo TV
Hilarious. Wonderful. She's the most beautiful woman in the world. Chocoholic. Compassionate. Always busy. Fun. Such good fun. Loving. Beautiful smile. Funny. Always funny. Stubborn. So embarrassing. A very special person. Selfless. Strong. Tired. Always bloated. So tired. Struggled to eat. She always used to be full up. She just often said, I don't feel right. I wish I'd known. I miss her. She's coming home today. Ovarian Cancer Action has created the first dedicated scientific research centre in the UK, determined to find a cure. With your help, all your sisters, daughters, grandmothers, wives and mums can keep on doing what only they do best. Ovarian Cancer, those words still haunt me. So please, help Ovarian Cancer Action continue their life-saving research so that others like me have a fighting chance. To make a difference to families like these, we need your help now. Whether you want to help us by sharing the symptoms with other women, raising funds for our research and awareness work, or volunteering your time, working together, we can save lives. Welcome back guys to New Day New Life. Today we're talking about fostering and it's National Fostering Fortnight. Um, we have our uh, guest and our expert Ranjida from uh, Stepping Stones um, Fostering Limited. Um, so I just want to say a quick shout out to a few people. Um, guys, you've done a, you've liked our pro pro uh, liked the program. Jesse Gore, Sitinder Singh, Jinda Singh, Rav, they've got Freddie Dickinson. So guys, thank you much for liking our uh, our show at the present moment. I'm going to go head back to um, Ranjana, uh, just continuing on from her. I've got a few stats for you, Ranjana, uh -huh. and I just wanted to just have your your thoughts on this. Um, fifty one over fifty one thousand children were living with foster care families in in March two thousand sixteen, and there's a need for a further six thousand foster families in the twelve months to cope with the with the demand. Oh, absolutely. I mean, demand for foster placements is just increasing at a phenomenal rate. Mm. It, on the one hand, it's rather sad that so many children cannot live with their birth families. Um, but on the other hand, uh, it just means that we are looking, we, we know that there are a lot of generous spirited people out there with very good childcare standards mm. who can, who are ideally placed to be foster carers and could contribute greatly to the life of a child. So um, yes, there is a need out there. It's unfortunate, as I said, that children cannot live with their birth parents for a number of reasons. Um, but uh, at, at the moment, mm. we do not have enough placements for children in care. And so they're living in residential establishments. and. Uh, really or in temporary placements which is not very nice because they're being moved from place to place which is not very helpful. Yeah, there's um, just coming to Ningo from there but the major, major age groups between them is um, 5 to 15 where there's 15-8% of them of which there's quite a lot, 75% are white uh, from white background. Um, there's 4%, that's nearly 3,000, over 3,000 kids from the Asian and the British Asian community mm -hmm and about 7%, which is over 5,000 um, people from the black or the British black community. How does that stat sound, how does it sound to you and how, how diverse is um, Stepping Stones with this? Um, 
Well, we do have uh, we have foster carers from uh, you know that reflect diversity uh, in, in, in general mm. um, uh, in terms of the population um, of, the, of London. We have Asian foster carers, we have Muslim foster carers, you know, we have um, black foster carers, we have somebody from a, a, a Middle Eastern background. So we do have, uh, and, and we are trying, we are constantly trying because children are coming, as, as, the, as um, people have settled in, in Britain from all over the world, mm. there is an increasing need um, for services for children who, who um, reflect the social upheaval that exists in society and it means that you know the children from different backgrounds are no safer i think there's always um this myth around that oh um children from asian families never end up in the care system well they do children from uh, all sorts of backgrounds um end up in the care system so yes we need to reflect that diversity and we work very hard at stepping stones to recruit foster carers from diverse backgrounds. Mm. It, it's, it's interesting that you talked about uh, Stepping Stone being a diverse uh, group of um, a company who caters to needs of the demand. It's like Southall TV, we cater for a number of people of a different genre and working from there. And you made an interesting point there about the mentality of the Asian people. And I know there's, from what you said, there's loads of people in the Asian community who um, could potentially foster, who've got houses, they've got the understanding similar with the black and the BMI community, and what message would you say to them what, to entice them to come to fostering? I would say, I think it's something we touched on earlier, which was um, that need for identity. A child needs to know and understand about their roots. Where mm. do they come from? They may be British, they may be black British, they may be Asian British, they may be European British, mm. um, they may be white British. Even within what we term white British, you know, you could have a Scottish background or mm. a parent from Scotland, from Ireland, from Wales, from, you know. Um, so it is very important, I think, for children to know and um, locate that sense of identity mm around their parents, where they came from, their families, their history, their sense of self. It's all tied up. So we want to encourage that. And, and I think that um, when we try to recruit people from different backgrounds, it is with that in mind. If you speak another language, well, how wonderful is that for a child to hear that language spoken? If you follow a particular religious background and you can take that child with you on that journey to share their, 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 their religious background um, and culture, because so much of culture is expressed through language and religion and uh, food, mm. and, you know. So I just think it, 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 is, it is really, really important. Um, well, just the whole London being a whole and... Um, oh, it's so the many, world. <laughs> it's the world in a city. Yeah, it's got so, city. Many, you know, so many languages being spoken, mm -hmm. so many diverse people from there. Um, and you talk about food as well. It's, um, I know from spe different religions and different mm. backgrounds, there's special catering requirements yes. and everything from there. Yes. Um, so I suppose if we had a foster carer who wasn't of that nature, um, supposing, hypothetically speaking, the foster carer was a vegetarian and the child who, who wasn't vegetarian, he was a, a meat eater, would they have to then provide meat in the house for them or how does that work? Yes, well, in the sense that we, we um, talk these issues through the mm. assessment process uh, and try to figure out um, what is um, that uh, point of no return mm -hmm. with a foster care where they'll say, I will do this, but I will absolutely not do this. Mm. And it's an interesting uh, point that you raise there because foster carers will, for example, their religion may forbid. Um, we have, uh, a, a, for example, a foster family where there are Sikh children, children of Sikh background, placed with a Muslim family. Now, the Muslim family can eat beef, the Sikh children cannot eat beef. So we are very clear that, um, yes, you may be able to do that, but you've got to take into account that these children placed with you mm. are from a different heritage, of a different religious background, and you've got to ensure that they do not eat beef as you would ensure that, you know, children from a similar faith as yours will not eat pork or any byproducts. So it's that. And, and most, I, 
think that, as I said, one of the requirements of foster parents is to be flexible. And most foster parents are pretty flexible. I worked with some foster parents who will say, listen, um, yes, in my household, I'm vegetarian, but I will allow them to to cook their own. There's a separate set of pans and things I can provide mm. if they're old enough. Or um, they can say, well, no, I don't really think I can cope. Or some people say, well, I can pr provide certain kinds of meals and not other kinds of meals. So there's well, a flexibility. There is absolutely, because what we're looking for at the end of the day are people, but you know, who are prepared to be flexible. At the end of the day, though, as I said, you really have to understand that people where your religion forbids you to do something, mm -hmm. such as with food. As I said, there are taboos around beef and pork for, for, for some people in the Asian community. You absolutely have a right to say, not in my home. But there's yeah. ways, as you said, there's ways and around it. Absolutely. Can, yeah, and very around. flexible foster carers have said, you know, if they're old enough, they can eat it outside. That's so, not my concern. Hmm. I just won't allow it in my house, which is fair enough, you know. Which is the same in any other yeah. thing that they're doing. Uh, well, I, uh, absolutely. Hmm. Um, so. so in terms of the diverse age range that, you, that is out there, what kind of placements or foster placements children do, do stepping stones tend to cater for? We take we um, uh, we are you know in the business of uh, uh, trying to s work with our prospective uh, foster carers to mm. see what age group they feel most comfortable in working with. Uh, some people like babies, others don't. They feel no, 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 that's too much of an issue for me. Mm. I it's a long time ago since I looked after babies, or I'm at an age now where I don't want to be running around you know, with babies and health visitors and they come down with this or that or stay up nights. So you try to work with the foster carers at, during the process of assessment to find out what sort of age group they have in mind, why they can, are considering that age group, what kind of category of approval are they seeking. So this is part of that ongoing process where you are trying to see what's going to be in the best interest of the foster carer, but also in the best interest of the children that you place with them. You, what you want to do is to make as perfect a match as you can. It doesn't always happen, but you, mm. you know. And that's where, again, flexibility comes in on, on part of the agency, on part of the children, and, uh, you, uh, and, and um, you know, the foster carers, so. Yeah, so we, Nita, who is the, um the head of the organization she unfortunately was she was meant to come in today but unfortunately she due, couldn't make it she had a medical problems. yeah yeah emergency. so we just want to say um to nita get well soon uh, to her and the family um just i just wanted to just touch on on nita as, a, as an individual she's i've, from, I've uh, looked at her resume and she's she sounds like a fantastic woman do you mind she this? is <laughs> she is amazing. Um, I think she beats all those stereotypes that there are around uh, of Asian women. Um, she has faced up to a number of um, personal struggles, which I won't go into here, but that makes her uh, for one very resilient woman. Hmm. What I have noticed in working with her, though, is that she is very, um, uh, very much child-centered. Hmm. And uh, she has also worked in uh, and, and continues to work in early years. So she has, you know, uh, provides for early years education as well um, as, as a separate business. And I think she is just uh, totally child focused. She wants to have an agency and to recruit foster carers who together with the staff at the agency at Stepping Stones will work in the best interest of children. So. She's got a lot of experience. She was in a niche. She was one of the first uh, people to have started uh, an independent fostering agency that provided, as I said earlier, Asian foster carers um, for local authorities. But now, um, feels times have moved, the Asian community is more settled, and the, the need for children to have homes uh, is, is growing and we need not to be so narrow and so tunnel visioned. Hmm. So the point that she is trying to get across is she's looking for foster carers to come on board uh, who can uh, represent all uh, members of the community. You say it's not been tunnel vision but she still does have quite a lot of Asian people that work for her. And she 
She does. Uh, well, she, she's she got, I would say, quite a diverse workforce as okay. well, um, along with, yes, there's, a, there's, an, a, there's an increasing number of, as I mentioned mm -hmm. earlier, there are people from, you know, who, who, who are, um, are of an Afro-Caribbean background. There are people from the Middle East, mm -hmm. people from Asia, people. So... Uh, so Anita, as, a, as an individual, she's won quite a lot of accolades for the amount of work she's done and it's been praised by a number of people in, in various sectors and organisations. I think that's mostly been uh, s things to do with sort of her community work that okay. she has been involved with over the years and it was before this particular mm -hmm. um, job because uh, Future Foster... Uh, sorry, uh, Stepping Stones mm -hmm. has just been uh, doing this uh, work so since 2015, okay. although she, as I said, has been involved in fostering sure. um, way before. Hmm. And just going back to the foster care facilities, um, we've got another question that's come in here um, in terms of fostering. Um, is there a chance that we that they can go and do seasonal work? So if it, for respite, how is that? What is respite? A respite, work? as I explained earlier, is well. It really means you have to be approved as a foster carer. Mm. So you have to go through the whole process that any other foster carer would have to go through, um, which means you've got to go through the background checks. Mm. You've got to go through the uh, fostering background yeah. and the report that's done, uh, the in-depth assessment on your background, on your education, on your working experiences, mm -hmm. on your ideas about childcare. Um, your what are you looking for for yourself your motivation uh, references are taken um, we have to check you know there's got to be a police check your health check the, um, which are all so necessary checks but it's in terms all of, those have to be yeah. done and then if that's all you want to do mm -hmm. then uh, that's what you would you would be approved for you would have to present this report all this checks and this report that's written um, go to a panel, to a fostering panel, and the panel make a, a, a decision to recommend mm -hmm. you for approval or not, as the case may be. Um, and then the agency decision maker makes the final decision. So um, that's that's sort of the the, the 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 way it works for every foster carer, but. Because during that process you will have expressed that you only want to work as a respite carer, then um, you're not necessarily going to have ongoing work as a foster carer. It will just depend on if there is a need for a respite carer, then you will be approached. Okay. Um, I've got another question here from uh, Jim, who's actually working as a, he's a trainee. Um, social worker and just wonderful wanted, you're welcome <laughs> just, just as you're you've you've um, studied in social work you're a social work expert how does that sure mm -hmm. <laughs> but how does that work with um, if he um, like Jimmy has put his question for if he wants to come along and become a social worker how does one become a social worker oh to become a social worker well uh, I think uh, more than me uh, the, the ideal people to answer that question really would be social work uh, providers of education so mm. you need to approach your local universities and colleges who um, provide social work education um, and you can I think there are various routes into it mm -hmm. uh, but at the end of the day you still have to uh, uh, qualify with the degree so it's a degree based course nowadays and there are any number of educational establishments offering a social work course as part of that you will be asked to do placements so okay. that you get some real life experience of being a social worker uh, if you already have a degree the government runs a program mm -hmm. where they are um, it's like teach first so this is social work first where the government is recruiting um, graduates who want to come into social work and perhaps end up in social work management. So in terms of stepping stones, is it something that they can provide? We do provide placements for um, social work students, but you've already got to be on an approved social work course. And uh, we work with that particular university. And when they need placements for their students, they could be um, undergraduate students or they could be master's level students. Mm -hmm. So. Last year we had a master's level international student. Um, this year I believe the student is an undergrad so on an undergrad yeah. course. 
So the best thing is contact you guys. Um, well, the best thing is, in fact, if you want to, if you're seeking a placement, no, you have to go through your university and ask them okay, so. uh, to find your placement in fostering if that's what you're interested in. Uh, we do, as I said, offer placements, but through it has to be through your university. So it's got to be, you've got to be approved individual, um, trained and necessarily having the skills and qualities. So, Jimmy, if you do, go through university and hopefully you can go through specialist stepping stones and they can provide you with something. There are placements that are available. And there are people who are actually on the course and uh, one one seeing they're probably enjoying their time on the course. Um, from, my, from my understanding, there are Stepping Stones is a very um, professional um, agency that provides those accommodations for you. Just coming back to um, what, what fun things do foster carers do and what, did, what, does, agent, what does Stepping Stone help with? Is there... um, well... Uh... We help out with, with a number of things. Um, one of the recent ones that comes to mind is that we had uh, a placement of uh, three siblings, a sibling group of uh, three uh, children from a Sikh background placed with uh, a Muslim family. And we felt that um, the children needed to do certain things that would reflect their Sikh heritage. They mm -hmm. needed to learn more because uh, the younger uh, children are, are still under the age of 10 and therefore, you know, they need to know a lot more about their background. Um, and we arranged for them to go to Sikh camp. They went last year. They had a really good time. And the foster carers were very good. I think they, they were very nervous about sending the children away to live on their own. Mm. And so they went and um, checked out the, the, the Sikh camp for themselves. It was a residential camp. They went there and um, the camp counsellors and organisers were wonderful. They took them around. They showed them what you know they do with the children and where they expect the children to sleep and how the whole program would be run and i think everyone was really happy so in the end they um they've agreed that the children can go the local authorities agreed as well that the children benefited mm. so they're going back uh, to the camp this summer again oh. so, so, so you, uh, a win-win for everyone so the so stepping stones actively promotes working oh, with the community and community groups and absolutely and people running camps and so yeah just want to say thank you to freddie dickinson's that, um if you've got any comments any questions um feel free to share your thoughts and your feelings um i'm just just about the whole process um it's quite a lot of training involved and i've got a few people asking here about english um, if english is not their first language but they can speak good english is that good enough for the courses or how does it work with that um you know at the end of the day <sighs> It's, it's difficult. You have to know sufficient English because after all the child place with you is being raised in this country uh, and they're going to go to an English speaking school presumably. They are going to need healthcare access which is going to be delivered uh, by people who speak English. They, um, so so it, I feel it's very important for children to get a sense of the wider community they live in and the language of this country is is also going to be part of the background. You know, mm. when we talk about black British or black Asian or, or however you see your identity, if it includes a British identity as well, mm. then you're going to have to learn, uh, you know, to, to cope with the, the, the British way of life. And that includes um, knowing the language and being relatively fluent in it because you're going to be asked to write reports. You have to write logs as a foster carer you have to maintain a record of the children that stay with you. So you what's, what's a log? A log is a, 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 a record of how the children are doing in placement. Okay, so... It, so the child, uh, there may be one child with you or there may be more than one child with you. But on each child on a daily basis, you should really be recording um, what uh, has gone on for them that day, uh, what you've done with them, what they've done for themselves. You know, it just is a way of picking up. Um, I think people often forget that they, they start sometimes, if it's a stressful um, situation, they, they start focusing on the negatives rather than the positives. Okay. So I think it's about learning to record the positive things that went on for the child as well. And what you've done 
for and with the children. Mm. So depending on the age of the child, hopefully you will be working with the children to achieve the best outcomes for them. Um, but sometimes the child is very, very young and you have to or has some kind of a, 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 a disability that you have to work with other professionals. So that again requires um, that you maintain very accurate records and those have to be in English. And I take it that everything's got to be confidential? Oh, absolutely. Confidentiality is a huge issue. You cannot uh, speak about that uh, child who's placed with you uh, in, in terms of disclosing why they're in care. There could be some very, very traumatic reasons mm -hmm. that lead to a child but being placed in on care. On the whole, foster caring is, is, is a quite rewarding place to be in. If you like working with children, it is the best, absolutely the best uh, rewarding situation to be in, you know. Yeah. You gain so much for you because of the joy, as I said earlier, of seeing a child uh, move on in their lives and, um, and make positive choices for themselves, that you've enabled them to think these things through mm. and help them. Uh, grow and uh, uh, enrich their lives. It's, it's a wonderful experience. So if, there's a, if there was a viewer at home or a, a family or a couple at home and they've watched the show and they're really interested and they've either had kids or having kids or in the process of, what message would you give to them to, on behalf of Stepping Stone to take that plunge? I would say, please talk to us. Uh, we'd be very interested. You do, however, have to have suitable accommodation. By that, I mean you've got to have a spare room for a child because, again, by law, we have to give a, a, a child room of their own. Mm -hmm. So, And that's just good practice. Um, so, so you need to be able to meet certain basic criteria, which I really can't go through right here because it's very peculiar to each situation. So feel free to call us, get in touch, email, um, phone, you know, um, Facebook, I believe. Yeah. So all the regular channels of social media are open and available. Uh, any questions, we'd be more than happy to answer them for you. Um, I just want to say, coming to the end of our show, I want to say thank you very much for coming in and sharing your knowledge, sharing your, the details about Stepping Stones and talking to us about fostering in the fortnight, uh, national fortnight of uh, fostering as well. Um, just want to say, guys, thank you very much for listening. If you've been interested in the show, Stepping Stones um, will be able to help you and accommodate it. If you need to email, email Nita at steppingstonesfostering.co.uk or go on the website on www.ssfl, that's Stepping Stones Fostering Limited, dot family, or give them a ring on 0208 478 0840. So I'm going to say, um, all of you guys, thank you for watching our show. Um, if you've got any comments, any questions, please give us a shout. The number's on your screen. I just want to say, take care of yourselves, take care of each other. Until next time, take care from you. Goodbye. from 10 o'clock till 11 o'clock we come together with different guests and he'll teach and reset our life in money power and abundance so join us on Uttar Jago Geo Tuesday to Thursday 10 to 11 a.m. on Sapo TV